Hey guys, Liam here with more Steam Deck news for you today and there's quite a bit to go over. I'm going to start with a big one. There is a new Steam Deck beta available along with a desktop Steam beta that adds in, amongst other things, a new local file transfer system. This allows you to transfer a game and updates from one Steam client to another instead of from Valve's own servers. This is great for people who have multiple PCs, a PC and a Steam Deck, LAN parties, and the list of ways it can be useful goes on, including those with limited internet bandwidth. For this to work, you need to have both systems in the Steam beta and in the download settings you can change what transfers would be accepted, so it could be just from you, from friends, or from anyone. Valve say it's currently only for PC to PC or PC to Steam Deck, and there's numerous additional notes to be aware of in their Steam support entry on it. Some things to keep in mind is that this only works if your systems aren't already doing downloads, and it will only transfer the official game files. So no mods or change files will transfer over, and if any files are changed, the source system will need to re-grab them again from Steam servers first. And it only works in desktop mode on PC, and not in big picture mode currently for the source system. This certainly seems like a really useful feature that I hope they keep working on and improving, and it could save you a lot of time downloading in various scenarios. However, if you're doing lots of modding and changing configuration files and such, sticking to other methods like Warpinator or FTP transfers would be a good idea, which I already have various guides on on the channel that'll be noted in the corner of the video and you should see them noted in the description as well. Next up, for those of you wanting to upgrade the SSD in your Steam Deck, there's more ways now available to do this, with iFixit now offering up SSDs. They have the 512, 1TB and 2TB models, along with full upgrade kits, but it's not currently available in the EU or UK, so you need to go elsewhere for that. For the UK, for example, Scan UK are now also offering a 1TB model that is compatible with the Steam Deck. It's really good to see more places stock these smaller SSDs as eventually they will come down in price as they're a bit expensive right now. Next up we have upgrades to Proton Experimental which was updated twice recently since I last spoke to you on this. Although the updates are a little bit small, every little bit of compatibility helps. It was updated on February 10th, which included a fix for Arabic fonts in FIFA 21 and 22. They also added in a fix for multiplayer in Age of Empires 3. There was an improvement made to monitor naming in Hogwarts Legacy and other games. This change is only for X11, not Wayland. So what that means is for now that would be desktop mode on Steam Deck and normal Linux desktops. And there was also a fix for Wild Hearts keyboard input issues as well. Next up, we have an interesting one. Have you ever noticed how Steam often has small and sometimes quite large downloads, sometimes every day for various Steam games? These are usually for the shader cache to make games perform better. However, there's been a bug for quite a long time where instead of it being incremental small updates to the shader cache, you might end up getting the full entire shader cache again in a big download. Valve mentioned in a bug report it was a server-side issue and they've solved it so it should no longer happen. But to be clear, you'll still see lots of small downloads because that is intentional. Shaders change with game updates, with driver updates, and they get built up by Valve over time. Valve also recently put up their year in review blog post for 2022 and I won't go over all of it but simply highlight just how well Steam is doing as a whole and in short ridiculously well. Valve continue to pretty much have a license just to print money with that 30% cut that they take from most developers. They said in a blog post that through 2022 they had 83,000 new paying customers every single day. I cannot even begin to imagine the level of money going through them here and the amount of data that they're transferring. It just boggles the mind. 
Another exciting upcoming update for the Steam Deck is that Valve are preparing SteamOS 3.5 to include a newer version of the Linux kernel, which is the main big part of the operating system. On Twitter, Valve developer Pierre-Lou Griffet mentioned, There are performance improvements in the pipe on workloads that need SMT disabled to perform well. Those are being tested now and will release as part of the updated kernel we are working on for SteamOS 3.5. In reply to my query on it, they said that Sonic Generations is one. The performance with SMT on should be similar to kernel 5.13 with SMT off for one example. Another one that it will help is emulation. Some emulators and some games and certain emulators need SMT off to actually perform better. Next up, JSUX, the popular Steam Deck accessory maker, has put up a new Steam Deck carrying case, which will give you more storage for all the little bits that you need to take with you. It honestly looks pretty nice, and the older one that they sent me is actually quite good, so it's great to see them continue to iterate on existing products to make them better. JSOX also told me that they'll be sending me the new one to take a look at, along with all the different coloured backplates that they're going to be doing, so stay tuned for some thoughts on those in future. Because if you missed it in my previous news video, they are now going to be doing multiple colours of the Steam Deck backplate. KDE Plasma 5.27 was also recently released, available now for desktop Linux, and it will come in a future SteamOS upgrade for Steam Deck to improve the desktop mode. It comes with lots of cool enhancements like window tiling, which actually looks really useful to get the most out of the space that you have on your screen. But honestly, I'm most excited about the improvements to multi-monitor support. Since I use two monitors on my PC, and it will make the experience better when docking a Steam Deck as well. How about some quick game news now? Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector recently added Steam Deck support. This is a pretty cool looking turn-based strategy game. And in their recent patch notes, they stated that they've made a number of changes to improve the experience when playing on Steam Deck. The first is that it will default to gamepad controls now, and the fonts will be more readable, and the on-screen keyboard should automatically display when required. And even further than that, they've updated their VSync handling for smoother gameplay. Everspace 2, currently in early access and shortly to be having a full release, got a Steam Deck and Linux native release update. With a native Linux release being a priority that they will hopefully have ready in time for the upcoming 1.0 release, and they also said after that that they'll be looking into some Steam Deck specific optimizations for things like text size, user interface and so on for the smaller screen. Another cool indie game is Alina of the Arena, a gladiator battling deck builder, also got Steam Deck support recently. Their patch notes were really short and sweet, just mentioning that they've added gamepad support and Steam Deck support specifically. So if you like your deck building games, have a look at that one. We Were Here Forever, a co-op puzzle adventure has recently been Steam Deck verified now as well. Now I actually played the first game in this series with a friend years ago and it was a huge amount of fun. The way the game splits you up in different rooms and you have to communicate via in-game walkie-talkies is just amazing. Finally now, the new Dead Space also had a Steam Deck upgrade recently as well. It's not exactly clear on what they did though. In the patch notes, the developer simply mentioned, amongst some gameplay tweaks, that they did some Steam Deck improvements, but they didn't elaborate on what. It's still good to see, but I do wish developers would say exactly what they're doing. That's it for today though. Don't forget to check out my recent videos showing off a few other games. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps me out as YouTube has been burying me a bit more lately. Anyway, thanks for listening, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you later.